Good morning and welcome. It's 8.30. It's the 29th day of April 2022. It's Arbor Day for anybody who remembers that holiday. It's 53 degrees and sunny here at Site B. Baseball season is on its way. And we are looking at the end of the week bits and bobs of news. So let's take a look at what's going on. And by the caption, you can see that our top story is, surprisingly, Dungeons and Dragons. Specifically, the Dungeons and Dragons movie coming out, Honor Among Thieves. Uh, we had the um, CinemaCon uh, recently, and we had a bunch of trailers. Uh, CinemaCon is like Comic Con, but for the movie industry. So, anybody, people with the movie industry who want to know what's going on with upcoming movies and projects that are looking to backing and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah, we had a trailer, a 30 second trailer for that. We had some stuff. For other TV and movies coming up, including another Transformers film is coming up called Rise of the Beefs. But we're interested in the footage from Dungeons and Dragons movies. Unfortunately, I cannot show the link because it's already down since it was just a link for specifically uh, CinemaCon. But we do have uh, a rundown. So we got uh, in the 30 seconds, we had Chris Prine on horsepack riding next to Michelle Rodriguez talking about them needing a team. We had a blue dragon flying overhead. We had a fantasy city, possibly water deep, seen from overhead. We had a character pulling black on a slingshot wristband to fire something. Slingshot wristband sounds totally D&D. We had a big action sequence in an outdoor arena with pillars growing out of the ground and people jumping off the pillars and bows being fired in magic. We had Rege Jean Page, the heart, swoony heartthrob from the first season of Brightonton on horseback riding towards some ruins. We had a character in a long shot, uh, possibly Chris, Chris Pine dancing because we can't have a movie without Chris Pine dancing in it. Uh, we had a wizard casting a shield spell, possibly. We had uh, some other action. Apparently, it's got a very much uh, superhero Marvel Gu Gu Guardians of the Galaxy vibe to it. Um, target audience is apparently Marvel meets Game of Thrones meets, you know, D&D &D meets Guardians of the Galaxy. So, yeah, we're looking like action comedy. I mean, if it's got Chris Pine dancing in it, it's action comedy. Perhaps doing the Dungeons & Dragons movie as an action comedy would be brilliant because that way it would appeal to a wider audience than just us. Or perhaps doing Dungeons & Dragons movie as an action comedy is a horrible idea and it'll look awful. I don't know. We'll wait and see. I'm, you know... A fantasy version of Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, everybody thought Guardians of the Galaxy wouldn't succeed, and it ended up being one of the biggest Marvel successes because it was just so funny and weird and quirky, and everybody loves the characters. Okay, speaking of Dungeons and Dragons, the responses to Spelljammer continue, and they are mostly negative. My favorite one from today is from one of our self-described 5e wizards of the cult cult wizards of the coast wizards of the coast <laughs> uh wizards of the coast cultists who you know 5e can do no wrong and this one is i cannot wait for spelljammer to come out i love spelljammer but wizards of the coast needs to take all the gonzo out of spelljammer now, in return, in reference to Dungeons and Dragons, Gonzo generally refers to anything in a Dungeons and Dragons campaign that doesn't really fit the medieval fantasy uh, of Dungeons and Dragons. So, um, a, a typical, you know, Gonzo idea would be He-Man, or Ralph Bashke's Wizards, or Thundar the Barbarian, where you have the trappings of normal fantasy, but then you have things like robots and guns and chaos magic and spaceships and aliens and giant floating dead gods' heads and weird Jack Kirby-style art and anything that normally you wouldn't see in Lord of the Rings or... King Arthur. So, like, if King Arthur ran into a UFO, 
that would technically be Gonzo. So these individuals, this individual wants Spelljammer to come out because he loves Spelljammer, but he doesn't want any of the Go Wizards of the Coast must take, must take the Gonzo out of Spelljammer. So Wizards of the Coast must take all the spaceships out of Spelljammer, all the alien races out of Spelljammer, all the anachronistic references out of Spelljammer, uh, all the guns out of Spelljammer, uh, all the giant dead gods floating in space, uh, the Rock of Brawl, the giant shopping mall, the beholder that sits on the top of Rock of Brawl that knows it's in a D&D &D game, uh, intelligent insects, lasers, robots, you know, all the things that make Spelljammer Spelljammer, the Saturday morning cartoon elves in space with lasers and, you know, spaceships that look like um, snails. Take that all out. I don't want any of that in my spell jammer. Which would make it just normal D and D. So what you're saying is you want your D and D five E to be like it is now, but maybe even less so. Which would just not be spell jammer, you idiot. It would just be. You take all the Gonzo out of Spelljammer, that means you take the spaceships out of Spelljammer, which means it's just Earth, normal, you know, whatever world, Earthbound, normal D&D &D fantasy with no aliens, no guns, no weird magic, no spaceships, no space elves, no laser beams. No, Yeah, it just would be normal D&D, &D, dude. So, yeah. You know, I think I, yeah, I don't think you actually like 5e individual who keeps saying this shit i think you just like talking shit about 5e while you claim you're a 5e fan because you appreciate the hate clicks because you know you're never going to get any positive clicks all right moving on to other news we have some previews from the blade runner rpg available up free league has posted some Stuff from the Blade Runner RPG ahead of the Kickstarter, which starts next week. This will be one of the few projects I ever kickstarted because I am a huge Blade Runner fan. I don't know if I've said this before, but when I was a kid at home in the Valley at Studio City, we, in the early days of cable, I had a you know bootleg copy of Blade Runner on VHS, and I would watch that, and then if you know, and then I would like watch it like one or two times. Sometimes I would watch Blade Runner, turn on cable, Blade Runner was on the cable channel, so I would watch it again, or I would rewind the VHS and watch it again. I love Blade Runner. Even before I knew what cyberpunk was, Blade Runner was just my film for like a year. So I'm very excited about this uh, Blade Runner RPG, which, by the way, is the most anticipated role-playing game of 2022. Blade Runner, the most anticipated role-playing game of 2022. Not a Wizards of the Coast product. Ha <laughs> ha! Suck it, Wizards of the Coast. Uh, so we have a picture, some pictures basically, and uh, bits and pieces of writing. Um, I will post the link if you want to see these pictures. The art looks amazing. I mean, really, it looks like Blade Runner. It looks like they just took slides out of Blade Runner, blew them up, and put pictures on it. Uh, uh, it really, the art really captures the feel. I don't know if the game is going to capture the feel of, you know, I mean, I don't know if there's a market for Blade Runner in 2022, but uh, especially since so many other cyberpunk games are already out and so many cyber, cyberpunk games claim to try and capture the feel of Blade Runner. But uh, congratulations to Free League for getting the rights to Blade Runner, the film and the books and the second film, which, you know, wasn't as good as the first and that amazing Vangelis soundtrack. Oh my God. I can still hear it sometimes in my head, ding, 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 ding. you know, and the, the flying car and the, 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 the building in the back venting out the flames and that, uh, you know, Deckard and, Oh God, it just, it. I love that movie. I don't know why I just did. So anyways, yeah. Uh, if you want to check out some of the sneaks, head on over to freeleague.com and, or kickstarter.com or check out the link down below. Um, oh yeah, more Spelljammer news. It should become as no surprise that Beetle and Grimm have announced a Platinum edition 
of the Spelljammer slipcase thing. So these will be the extra special art with the extra special doodads and uh, big, bigger book and whatever it is Beetle and Grimm does, all these weird special with encounter cards and ship cards and maps and stuff. And it's going to cost probably like $200. So if you're not just satisfied with the normal $50 Spelljammer that's coming out in June and want to get a $200 one to get some extra shit, Beetles and Grimm's Beetle and Grimm never passing up a chance to charge you even more for D&D stuff is coming out with a super special edition. Uh, all these will be available at your friendly local game store. That's Dreamworld Collectibles here in Ventura, California. I am looking forward to the uh, Blade Runner playtest. I guess I'm looking forward to the Dungeons and Dragons movie. Uh, it could, you know, either way, it'll keep D and D in the press. And so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm definitely looking forward to more Five E fans talking smack about Spelljammer. Because this is just the most fun I have had making fun of 5e fans in a while. But, but OGGM, you're a 5e fan. You defend it all the time. Yes, I do. 50% of the time, I defend 5e and Wizards of the Coast. And 50% of the time, I talk smack about 5e and Wizards of the Coast. And specifically, I will never stop talking smack about these, these hypocritical... I'm a 5e groupie, five, we're Wizards of the Coast cultists... Gary Gygax can do no wrong. Wizards of the Coast can do no wrong. Fifth edition is the best role-playing game ever made. But I only say bad things about it in while secretly saying, by pretending I'm saying good things, but I'm actually saying bad things, you know, because, I mean, a, 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 a comment like, I love Spelljammer. I can't wait for Spelljammer. But Wizards of the Coast has to has to take all the gonzo out of Spelljammer, which would make Spelljammer not Spelljammer. It would make it just d and I mean, you're just basically saying, don't make Spelljammer. I don't want spaceships in my d and I don't want lasers in my d and I don't want aliens in my d and I don't want a beholder that knows it's in a game in my d and I don't want a giant dead god's head that's been hollowed out and turned into a shopping mall in my d and I don't want gonzo in my d and but there is no 5e Wizards of the Coast D&D setting more gonzo than Spelljammer. It literally was a Saturday morning cartoon. It had elves and giant hamsters. So you take all that out, it's not Spelljammer. It's it's just, you're basically saying don't make Spelljammer Wizards of the Coast. Even though I want you to make Spelljammer because I love Spelljammer and I love everything about Spelljammer. I just don't want you to have any of the things that make Spelljammer Spelljammer in my Spelljammer. I, I give up. I, I... Till next time, I have been the OGGM, your guide to all the tabletop role-playing game news, weather, sports, general n internet nonsense, and honor among thieves. If you appreciate my snarky comments and sarcasm and shit-talking, let me know. If you think I should shut up, let me know. Because remember, I can't change or fix it if you don't tell me what's broken. And it's Friday. It's Arbor Day. So if you're feeling generous and want to celebrate Ar Arbor Day, consider taking a moment to subscribe to the OGGM Adventures and help me hit 700 subs. Till next time, get out of my Spelljammer, you crazy kids. I'll talk to you later.